Okay, so in this tutorial, uh, continuing with the F-15 thing, since I'm having fun with it, and I need the practice, uh, what we're doing is engaging multiple targets using the AMRAM. Um, so I'm going to change my loadout here. I'm just going to call it Spam. And all we're going to do is load up a bunch of AIM-120Cs. There's no reason to load the 120B, really. I forgot the exact difference, but it's an older model, so it performs less well. So, load up on a bunch of 120Cs, and we're going to leave off the drop tanks, because we don't need them right now. And change the paint job to the cool Ferris paint job, which looks super neato. And let's get going with it. Also, you'll notice I changed the flight path of a bunch of things. Where these were going perpendicular, this cargo plane here, and this flight of Hawks, uh, were flying perpendicular to our flight path. I changed them so that now we're flying parallel, so we'll see them on the radar. Meanwhile, I changed the AWACS to fly perpendicular, so we, my hypothesis is that we're going to see it on the RWR because it's constantly emitting radar uh, signal, but uh, we may not see it on our radar because of its, it's flying you know, perpendicular. So we'll do that, and then we'll also see how the IFF system works, which uh, is why I put these uh, hawks here. Sorry, I've got a bit of a sniffle this morning. And let's go with it. So what we're going to be doing is using the AMRAM's ability to engage multiple opponents at once. And, uh, you know, this is just kind of showing how the function works as far as the actual tactics and how you choose to use it and what the best way to employ these these functions are, that's going to be up to you uh, as the tactician. Uh, it's not always the best thing to do to engage multiple targets, and you, you're going to have to read the situation, see what the threats are, what your, uh, how your weapon stores are, you know, so you're going to have to kind of read that as it, as it goes, but before you get that far, it's always good to know how to do it so you have the option. Uh, basically, the short version is we're going to go into the mission. We're going to find our targets in RWS mode like we did in the last video. And then we're going to switch to track while scan, TWS mode. Uh, switch weapon to AMRAM, which should be very easy because that's all we're carrying aside from the gun. And then lock up targets, soft lock them in TWS mode in the order we want to engage them. As you fire the AMRAM one at a time, they will, your radar will automatically cycle through the targets in the order that you locked them up. And I think you can do this with up to, uh, dang, um, I think it's six targets, but maybe eight. More than I ever have actually done, so certainly enough. All right, let's turn on our radar our range out to 80 miles and as expected we see what do we see that looks like the flankers now notice uh, we see the flankers here on the radar but we don't see the uh, the a50 AWACS probably because it's flying from left to right and beaming us and our radar is having a hard time detecting it at that range And I don't know why we don't see the Hawks. They're certainly there. Sorry, 50. There's our cargo plane, which we also don't detect. And here's our pair of Hawks. Zooming along, being all British and stuff. Ah, here we go. That's something. That is probably our cargo plane. Now, if and when we detect those hawks, you're going to see them not as a vertical bar across the uh, across here, but you're going to see them. That looks like our A50 out there at longer range, and these are the flankers. Um, so let's switch to trackball scan mode and start picking targets out. And I believe that number over them, that 30, the 20, and the 10, that's going to be our target altitude. 
that one back here is probably the cargo plane. These are our flankers, and the hawks are nowhere to be seen. So, like I said, we're going to lock these in the order we want to engage them. I'm going to go to active pause so that we don't zoom in on our targets too quickly. Let's just say, because, you know, it's hard to differentiate. See how they're flying in formation? They're all close together. It's going to be hard to kind of pick those apart and engage them in sequence. Let's try it. I'm going to try and engage two flankers and then move on to the cargo plane just for demonstration purposes. One. And in a real engagement, you don't have this much time, so that's going to be part of the challenge. So that's two. And then the third target's going to be our N26. If I can get it on there. Oh, okay, so now I've locked up three targets. You can see the first target has the little carrot like a uh, triangle wedge shape, and then the second ones have a little box around them. And uh, that's how things are going to go. So basically, we're going to select our AMRIP. First off, we're going to put our radar into EVR mode. Oh, look, and we've lost our targets. That's just how it works. And then we're going to switch it back to TWS, acquire our targets, we're gonna find them, lock up two flankers. One, two, and then our third target, the cargo plane. Select AMRAMS, which is already done for us here. And then we're going to unpause and... I'm not going to bother uh, notching the band or anything like that, do any defenses. I'm just going to show you how the firing sequence works. Also, one thing I kind of glossed over last time is our dynamic launch zone. what the different carrots on these mean. Now, the, the, the long vertical hashtag, or uh, not hashtag, I'm sorry, the horizontal dash, let's look at this. See where that carrot is, where that says 950 and then the 20. That top hash is, like I said before, kind of offhand. That is your maximum range for a compliant target, one that is going to fly on its current path and not make any evasive maneuvers, it's not going to drop any countermeasures or whatever. Assuming it makes no evasives whatsoever, that means it's probably going to hit. Now below that, kind of, uh, sorry I don't have a mouse pointer here for some reason, but the, the second more pronounced horizontal slash, that is, I believe, maximum range for a target that decides it wants to turn and run the other way. So. If you, obviously, if the plane decides it wants to pump and head back in the other direction, if I fired it right now, there's a good chance my missile wouldn't reach it. It wouldn't have the energy to catch up with it. But if I'm closer before I fire, that second horizontal line there, right below the 950, uh, that's where I want to wait until it gets below. And then the third one down below, that's for a an evading target that is dropping countermeasures is doing pretty much everything it can to get away. So you'll notice that the, the closer you are, the better. Right now we're at 12 miles for the first target. Like I said in the uh, the other tutorial, the actual performance in the AMRAM is probably better than what we have in the DCS. Anyway, let's, let's start firing. So I'm going to Fox 3, boom. And it cycles over to the other target I queued up. Fox 3. And this, one, this third one, since it's farther back, you know, it's at longer range. It isn't closing nearly as fast as the flankers are, so that means we're going to have to do some catch-up. Okay, so I've got a shack on the target there. And the second one, boom, already hit. The third one, I haven't gotten in range for yet. And now I've lost the target. Here's the challenge. I don't know the exact. There we go. It's at 17,000 feet. Let's lock him up, and now we're ready to fire. 
you can see how things go a little, uh, you know, with the best laid plans, you know, <laughs> they tend not to uh, work out too well when contacting the enemy. Even compliant ones like this cargo plane here. Now, one AMRAM hit may or may not be enough to kill a bigger plane like that uh, AM26. Let's see what his damage state might be. And he's just cruising right along like nothing happened. I don't really know what to do about that. I've got five AMRAMs left, but I'm thinking let's go to cannon mode just as a sampler for. <laughs> go to close combat mode, cannon. We're going to swing around and kind of give a quick demonstration of how radar-assisted gun engagement goes. He wants me to fire the air rim. Of course, it would probably hit at this range. So even though he is running from me, he's a lot slower. I said I'll have a really good hit probability, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go to gun mode. Notice the HUD changes. This is radar assisted gun aiming. So basically, all you got to do is go to cannon mode and put the pipper on the target and just light it up. You know, the, the radar, the computers are going to calculate lead for you, where you should point your nose bullet drop, all that good stuff. And I like to think of this gun as kind of like a streaming shotgun rather than a laser beam. Obviously the closer you are, the more likely your shots are to hit. That should do nicely. One would hope. Yeah. So that's a sample of how the gun works. Pretty damn effective. Anyway. Back to BVR mode. Let's see if we can pick up those uh, those Sukhois that got away from us here. Yeah, since we don't have all the time in the world, let's cheat a little bit. They're going to be off to my right. This might be a little more complicated by the fact that they're not flying straight in or straight away from us. They're kind of going at a bit of an angle. Kicking the afterburner. cheat again. Make sure I'm not wasting your time heading in the wrong direction here. But you can kind of see that kind of by cheating and looking at this map Springfield 1, Tally Bandit at Bullseye 083 for 60 at 15,000 You know, there can be contacts all throughout the world that you just don't notice on. Even with the powerful radar of the F-15, sometimes you're going to miss stuff. That's terrifying, and that's when you tend to get shot down. Anyway, let's uh, switch to TWS mode. Now that we found our targets, we pick up the targets. And we're going to lock up one, two. Uh, single target track mode. Uh, if you double click a target in TWS, it'll go to single target track mode. That's not what we want. So we're going to lock up two. We're still in afterburner, mind you. You notice we're moving on at a pretty good clip here. I don't have launch uh, authorization. Watch these yellow lights kind of up here on the uh, these here that tell you when you've got at least minimal requirements to fire your missile. Notice also that our range is again 15 miles, which is not what uh, they advertised in the AMRAM brochure. So since I've locked up both targets, the radar is going to automatically cycle through them in order. Fox three, and I seem to have lost the first target. That happens. May have gone beaming or whatever. Yeah, I 
think I lost the second target as well. So flying perpendicular to me, I lost radar lock entirely. Let's go to close combat mode and see what I can pick up here. Close combat mode with an AMRAM works just the same way. Basically, you, you put it in close combat mode, you select your AMRAM, and once you're... Basically, you kind of point the nose. If you get whatever target the radar picks up first is what it's going to engage. So let's Fox 3. Three, so we can engage two targets using close combat mode right there. And they might hit. Boom. And looks like boom. Easy money. Just out of curiosity, I have two slammers left. And there happens to be an enemy AWACS out there. Right about here. See that dot right there? That's a friendly contact, I believe. Actually, I retract that statement. That's not a friendly contact, but they do look very similar to that. at 26 miles. dot right there is definitely a friendly contact. Those are going to be our hawks. That's what they look like. Don't shoot those. You shoot this. I'm zooming along at full afterburner here. Normally that's not something you tend to do. As you can notice, doing so has drained a lot of my fuel. Watch our DLZ, our dynamic launch zone here on the right. Since an AWACS probably isn't going to be doing any hard maneuvering, I'm going to go ahead and fire at maximum range. Which is at 9 miles right now, strangely. I expected a longer engagement, longer range now. It's such a slow target. Bingo fuel. Bingo fuel. Let's drop out of afterburner. Bingo fuel. Fired two AMRAMs in rapid succession because uh, these bigger planes tend to take one hit if they're flown by AI like that. Boom. Shack. And where's number two? Boom. Right there. That should do it. But just in case. Cannon mode. Since I still have it locked up. Lock. The radar isn't really picking them up for some reason. Get him out. There we go. Notice as he turned sideways to us, the radar had a harder time. That should do it. Russian planes made out of pure stellinium and are very difficult to destroy. That's it for this tutorial. I know I went kind of off topic there with the gun engagements, but hopefully you got the idea of how to acquire and engage multiple targets with your AMRAM and uh, 
how to do that and when that's appropriate, I'll leave up to you. And good luck out there. Okay, tack view again. It's always good to see how things look externally. I'm gonna speed up time a little bit here. My targets are out here, and you'll see my plane kind of stops mid-air. Look for the dotted lines that emanate from my plane's nose. That's the radar view. When I get a lock on something. Oh, let's see, mark the target here. Mark another target. Lock that up. Soon. Fox 3, Fox 3, boom, boom. And then the third target has to wait because I'm too far away from it. Get on target. I'm kind of grumpy because it survived my missed shot, so I swing around for a gun kill to humiliate him. Notice that's radar assisted gun. Notice here, this is actually kind of an interesting little bit. Let's just back up a little. Watch my radar beam. I'm trying to do the multiple target engagement. by right, locking that target, swinging over and locking that one, but also notice as they fly perpendicular to, my, to me, my radar loses track entirely. This line will disappear. Boom, gone. But I've already fired, and the missile is trying to track the target, find it with its own radar, but it can't quite do it. So I have to go to close combat mode. Splash them that way. Go for the AWACS. Managed to hit it with two AMRAMs. Pop, pop, despite his dropping of chaff here, that's these little yellow things. And hit him with a gun. Anyway, hope this helps. Good luck.